Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. A couple months ago, I had the opportunity to get a sneak peek at a new application from Skylum Software. That application is called Aperty. Aperty is a portrait editing app, and it's really a lot more. And let me tell you, I haven't been this impressed with a new application in a long time. As a matter of fact, I was so impressed, I decided to create an entire course on Aperty. It's called Aperty A to Z. It is currently on pre-sale on my website. I'll have a link to it in the description below this video. If you purchase it during the pre-sale, you'll save quite a bit of money on it. Well, I've decided to make the first video from my course available for free on YouTube because it's a quick start video. So even if you don't purchase my course, if you watch this video, it should help you use Aperty as quickly as possible. So again, I'll have everything linked in the description below this video. And without further ado, here's Aperty. Hi everyone, welcome to my course on Aperty. In this quick start video, I'm going to give you a lay of the land. I'm going to show you how to get images into Aperty. We're going to briefly go over Aperty's workspace, and then we're going to do a simple image edit. In future videos, I'll go into more detail about the different tools in Aperty and all of the different ways you could edit an image. Now, when you first open Aperty, you'll see this screen and there's a button right in the middle, Create Project. Aperty was created for the event photographer. What I mean by that is a photographer who photographs different events, such as weddings or engagements or graduations or parties or corporate events. That is an event photographer. So if, say, this photographer did a portrait session, that is the event, they would come home with an SD card or a memory card full of images. And all they need to do to use Aperty is take those images off that memory card, put them somewhere on their computer in a folder somewhere. Then open up Aperty and create the project. So all of your different events will be in individual projects. So if a week ago you did a wedding for Tom and Nancy, that's your event. So you would create a project for Tom and Nancy's wedding, and all of those image from, images from that event would go in that project. Then, let's say this week, you did a wedding for Jerry and Lynn. Well, for that event, you would create a project in Aperty, and you would put all of the images from that event into your project. Now, several years ago, I took several photos of my son Joe in my studio, so that was my event. It was a portrait session. I need to create a project for that portrait session. So I'll click Pro Create Project, and you give it a name. And I'm just going to call it Joe. It was my son Joe. So we'll create a project. Then what you need to do is just click here or drag a folder of images here. I'm going to click there. And if you click there, just navigate to where the folder is on your computer that has the images from that event that you want to put in this project. Now, I happen to call the folder Joe. The, the folder name and the project name do not have to be the same. It just was a coincidence. So we'll click open. Then you'll notice it will open up this entire folder of images in Aperty. There's a film strip at the bottom. The image is in the middle. Over on the right-hand side are all the tools and they're in different panels. There are a lot of tools here, and throughout this course, we'll go over everything. The top left-hand side, you'll notice there's a couple things here. Let's start there. First of all, you have this Aperty symbol. This is just a little menu where you could check for updates, install plugins, and this isn't installing plugins inside of Aperty. This is to install Aperty as a plugin in either Lightroom or Photoshop. So if I go to install plugins, you get this little dialog box, and you can see I already have Aperty installed as a plugin in Lightroom Classic. I could uninstall it if I want, and I have the option to also install it as an Adobe Photoshop plugin. Now, this menu too, you could have some settings there, change the language, and that's it. So you have this little menu. And next to that, we have this folder. If you click this folder, this shows you your projects. Now, I only loaded one project so far in Aperty the portrait session of my son, Joe. Again, if you're a busy event photographer, you probably have a lot here, a bunch of different weddings, 
a bunch of different portrait sessions, a bunch of different engagement sessions, and so on. So when you want to go to one, just double click right on it and you'll open it up. Now, if you want to add images to a project, you would click right here and then you could navigate to where the folder or and images are and you could add them to the session or project that you have open. Now are a couple tools. They have them really close over here, but these are actually tools. First of all, you have this little eraser, and this is actually uh, two different tools. You have the eraser tool, which actually uses AI to remove things, you know, pimples and sensor spots, things like that. It has a clone stamp tool. Clone stamp tool, you would take um, a session or you take a click to get a source, and then you would clone those pixels that are under the source to wherever you want them. So that's just a typical clone stamp tool. Next to that, we have dodge and burn. So if you need to do any dodging and burning, you can do that as well. But most of the tools are over here on the right, and there's a lot. And they're in all of these different panels. And again, we're going to go over all that. Now, I think probably most photographers' workflow is they would go out and photograph their event, whatever it is. They come home, they take out the memory card from their um, camera, plug it into their computer and take all the images off the memory card and put them in a folder somewhere. Then they'd open up Aperti, they'd create their event or their project. Once they create their project, they put all the images from that folder in the project like I just did now. Then they would go through the images and decide which one they want to edit, which one they might edit later, and which one they want to delete altogether. Now in this first image, it's okay, but you know, so I could just skip it or I could give it a pick flag. To give it a pick flag, hit the P key on your keyboard and you'll notice a little heart comes alive over here and a little heart in the corner of the image. Now this image maybe is a little dark, maybe a little blurry. I don't like it. I need to eject it. Hit the X key. You'll notice this little X came alive over here and we have a little X in the corner. You also could click right on the icons there if you want. This one's overexposed. Hit the X key. All right was kind of trying to dial in exposure. Then you could go through them just like that. If you say, I gave this one a P for pick, and then as you look at it, you might be a little blurry. Maybe I don't want to edit this, but I don't want to delete it either, so I don't want to reject it. You could unflag something by hitting the U key. So if something has a P pick flag or an X reject flag, you could unflag it with the U key. So just remember P, X, and U, and you're good to go. So you go through all the images and find one that you want to edit. Now, by the way, uh, you will be able to download all of these images from this session that I did with my son, Joe, and you could edit these uh, at home on your own. So let's just say I want to edit this image. Now we go over then to the right-hand panel. And as I mentioned, there's a ton of tools here. You could edit a landscape in here. There's just basic editing controls, you know, light, tone, uh, contrast, highlight, shadows, whites, and so on. We have curves, we have color, we have convert it to black and white. We could sharpen it. There's structure, noise reduction, everything is here. But there are specific tools for portraiture, and we're going to talk about those in a minute. Because what I like to do is start out with the global adjustments for the entire image. In this case, I had my son Joe in front of a black seamless backdrop. And it's not black enough, right? So I want to come in and probably just take blacks down to darken that up and maybe shadows down a little bit too because it is a low-key image. Bring up highlights. Now you can get a white and black point if you type or tap the J key and you can see that there's blue overlaid on the image now. That means that I'm crushing the shadows and this is a low-key shot so I don't mind crushing the shadows. If for some reason I had something too bright, I'd start getting red on the screen. That means I'm blowing out the highlights. And usually you don't want to blow out the highlights unless you're doing something high key. In this case, this is a low key shot. So I'm not really worried about the clipping indicator. So you just tap the J key again to turn those off. So I'm just doing this by eye. I just want to make sure that the background's dark. Obviously, I focused on his front eye. I think this was shot at F01.2. So the, you know, focus plane was really narrow. So not really worried about much here. I just want to make sure that it's nice and clean. Um, if there's anything else like curves or color, I'm not, I don't really need to do anything there. 
what I think I might do before I go over and do any portrait specific tools is I am going to go over to the eraser tool, the erase tool, and then I'm just going to get rid of some of this like that there by clicking. You can see how it got rid of that, get rid of that. So any of the larger blemishes or pimples, things like that, just get rid of them at this point here, maybe here. And it's a, usually I don't, I wouldn't even worry about these, but I just kind of want to show you how to use the tool. It's really super simple. Just click and paint and wait a second. You could have it not do it automatically. Meaning if I have this uh, switch turned off and there's a stray hair here and I want to get rid of that stray hair and maybe there's like maybe a scratch there. So I could paint everything, then click erase and do it all at once. So it's really up to you. Some images might work better this way. Some images might work better as you, you like click. I found that sensor spots and you know pimples and things like that work better to do it after each stroke. So that's good. Now I'm ready to add it, edit the actual portrait. So I need to go to the portrait tools, which are right here. And if you just go briefly here, you'll see that there is a crop tool. These are the edit tools we just did. So if I needed to crop it, I could crop it. I don't need to. These are the portrait specific edit tools. There are some reshape tools. Below that, there's creative tools. Here you could do creative lighting and uh, vignettes and add LUTs and things like that. Uh, below that is information about the image itself. We could reset the image here. So if we don't like our edits. Now towards the top here are presets. You can see that there's some presets that come here. Create your own as well. And here is masking. So you could mask the person, the background, or if there was a sky, you could mask the sky and do edits, uh, local edits to those areas. In this case, we don't have to worry about that. But again, we're going to cover all that in the course. Let's do the portrait editing though. So let's go to the portrait part. It sees right here. You have the option to just edit since he's there by himself. So we're just going to edit all. But if you had a group of people, you could edit all of them at once. Might not want to do that though, because some people might have, let's say acne, whereas another person has no acne and another person has a lot of makeup and another person's a child. So you may not want to do that. You may want to edit all the children the same way. So if there were like three children as a family shot, you know, mother, father, three children all around the same age, you come in, do children, and then just edit the children. It will ju All your editing will just be on the children. It just edit the women, the men, so on. So we're just going to keep it on all. And you'll notice there's these little triangles. These are called expose triangles. So you may have to roll these open. Just make sure they're rolled open. And usually what I do is I'll just move the slider towards the middle and just see what, it ha what happens. Now what it's going to do, it's actually going to map the face. So it's going to map the person's features on their face. It's going to find where their eyes are, their lips are, and so on. Eyebrows. And once it maps, then you're going to find that the editing will go relatively fast. So you just move it halfway. Then I'll dump, jump down to face skin, skin smoothing, and do the same thing. I'll just move it halfway. And you can see now it's starting to look like it should look. You could get a before after by hitting the backslash key or holding it in. There's before. There's after. Before after. You also, if you just want to see the before after for the effect you just adjusted, most of them will have little eyeballs and you can click and hold the little eyeball. There's before face skin and there's after face skin. Takes a second to kick in. Here's the skin blemish. And that one you can see just kicked in on his forehead and then let go and then you'll see it goes away. So it does take a little second to kick in. So so far, so good. Just a couple sliders. You can see how it cleaned up his face quite nicely. Um, face skin color correction. So if, you know, they got blotchy skin or they're real pale or something like that, you can move that to the right and it will tend to even things out. Um, dark circles removal. He has a tiny bit of dark circles, nothing really spectacular. But you can see how that will kind of take that darkness away. Get brightness face, which I usually like to do. So just brighten up their face. Um, shine removal, if they had shine. It doesn't really have shine. Now if we go down to the eye section, and just to make this so it's not as confusing, I'll close this down. So we'll go to the eye section. 
If you're familiar with Luminar, these are the same controls that are in Luminar. Uh, we have iris visibility. You also could replace the iris. So if you want to give him, say, green eyes, you can. You could see it changed his iris to green eyes. Or if you want to just give him blue eyes, even though he has blue eyes, you could do that. But we'll stay with the original iris. And we're going to give him iris flare. And this is as though you had a reflector down here pushing light up on his iris. So this is the original iris, and you can see what it does there. Redness removal, these are the blood vessels in his veins, or blood vessels in his veins, blood vessels in his eyes. And these are so hard to remove. And you can see, look at that. That's one of the hardest things to do in a portrait. And that did it wonderfully. Um, eye whitening, this is the white part of the eye. Just make it a little whiter. Eye enhancement overall, you can see, move that. I'm going to overdo it just a little bit. All right, so you can see what I did with his eyes. Here's before, and there's after, before, after. I definitely overdid it, but I just want to kind of give you an idea what you could do. All right, so let's go down to mouth. His teeth, or his mouth is closed, so there's no teeth whitening to worry about or to do. Uh, I'm not going to do any makeup. You could apply makeup to a person if you wanted to. You know, you could add uh, kind of like rouge to their cheeks and base to their skin. And you could contour it. You could add eyeliner and so on. Again, we'll be covering that in the course. Just doesn't need it on this video. Now, if we go down to the uh, right below it, this is the reshape section. If you wanted to, you could slim someone's face. Let's see, I don't need to do that here. And I don't think I've ever done that in my life. What I have done is I have made a person's eyes a little bigger, um, it's kind of standard things we used to do in Photoshop. There's like a puffer tool that you could use in Photoshop, still there, and you'd make their eyes 10% bigger. Now, I'm not sure if this is a 10 here is equivalent to 10% with the puffer tool in Photoshop, but um, see, it takes a second to kick in. See how it just puffs his eyes bigger? But typically, I would make someone's eyes just a little bigger. All right. Then you have the eyebrow arch. This is actually going to move his eyebrows, and it does take a second to kick in, and this is probably not anything I do. <laughs> See what it did? So I, not something I did, and I moved it almost all the way to the right. So those are the eye adjustments. Now it's not kicking. There it is. Thought I had him stuck in that way. All right, now nose. Nothing you could change the shape of someone's nose. We're not going to do that here. Mouth, uh, lip position, lip shape, stuff like that. We don't need to do anything like that and body. Now, as I mentioned here, typically what I would only do is uh, come in and just make the eyes just a little bit bigger. I could jump back to the actual people portrait tools, and we go to the makeup, and down here are lips. Often what I like to do, even though this is under the makeup section, is I want to just increase saturation a little bit and darken them a little bit. That's usually what I'll do too. Okay, so I think my portrait is pretty much done. Uh, so there's before, and there's after. There's before, and there's after. Now, I could create a preset, and the preset then could get applied to all similar images. I'll show that in a future video. And each individual image is mapped exclusively for itself. So it's not going to accidentally put iris adjustments on his eyebrow because in a different image, his head was tilted a different way. That image will get remapped and then the preset gets applied properly. And so that's a real time saver. And I know anyone listening to me that is a busy event photographer will know that that is really a godsend. That's going to save you a ton of time. So in the second video in this course, we'll dive in a little bit deeper. We'll start doing some more in-depth edits, and I'll show you what you could do with Aperti. One more time. Before. After.